In this video, we're going to go over the major estimates revision important update. And to give you a quick breakdown, we're going to go over what are important updates in the first place, how you can actually receive one of them, why they're so important to our process as investors, how you can actually use them, and in particular, this major estimates revision. Uh, we'll go over some examples of the different outcomes that uh, can occur from this particular topic. And lastly, I'll cover where you can go to do some more due diligence. So for starters, what are important updates? Well, it's pretty much in the name, but it's basically a brief summary of an important development in the underlying business or the stock that it's about. So for the topic today, we're gonna to talk about when analysts have a major revision to their estimates of the future for a particular stock, um, which is this topic here. But there could be other examples like a company reporting its earnings, uh, a, div a dividend change, uh, insiders buying or selling shares, uh, and those kind of topics are these important updates. So how can we actually receive one? Well, thankfully, it's quite simple. All we have to do is add a stock either to our watch list or to our portfolio. As soon as as soon as soon it's in either one of these spots, it's automatically eligible to receive these important updates and they'll appear either on our dashboard or in our inbox. So why are these uh, important updates so important? Well, they allow us to monitor the stocks that we're following, right? So the stocks that either in our watch list that we wanna buy or the stocks that we already own in our portfolio, it allows us to remain informed on the fundamentals of these stocks. Uh, because ultimately, like if we're interested in buying a stock uh, that's on our watch list, it's important to know the developments that go on in that business to then see if there's like an opportunity that arises that basically uh, upgrades our thesis or changes our thesis that makes it even more appealing than we thought, uh, or conversely, makes it less appealing and no longer on our watch list. Uh, and as for stocks that we own, it's important to remain up to date on the fundamentals because we need to check that our thesis that we had when we first bought it is continuing to play out, right? Because if um, if, if there's a change in the company's developments or the, comp the underlying business, then that could change our thesis about the stock as to why we own it in the first place. Uh, and that may, may be a reason for us to not, not own the stock anymore. So the most important thing though is these kind of important updates, like while they obviously allow us to remain informed of the fundamentals, they allow us to save so much time during the monitoring and research phase because alternatively, we would have to go and find these sort of insights manually by reading through the company's quarterly filings or annual filings or SEC filings if they're in the US uh, and try and then de um, derive the insight ourselves by reading through all those documents. Whereas these particular updates basically compile all the data and send it through in a very brief update uh, and it's very useful and saves a lot of time. So today we're going to have a look at the major estimates revision update. And like I mentioned, this is basically when analysts change their estimates of the future. And there's four kind of outcomes, right? So it's either an upgrade or a downgrade in their revenue estimates, or it's an upgrade or downgrade in their EPS estimates. And so the data covered in this particular update is here. So for example, it first talks about like the new revenue estimates, like what uh, analysts now expect the revenue to be, and they compare it to what they expected the revenue to be going forward. Uh, it's the new EPS estimates uh, compared to what they expected the EPS to be before. Uh, this is, of course, if there is forecast for these. Uh, the new, uh, sorry, the net income estimate versus industry. So this is how much the net income is actually expected to grow for this particular business versus the industry that it's in. And this allows us to get some context of like, okay, well, before we saw how the revenue and EPS estimates have changed for this particular stock, how is this particular stock's net income growth expected to compare to the industry that it's in? And this tells us if it's like the best opportunity in the industry, like our above average, or if it's actually below average and there might be better opportunities for um, higher net income growth stocks in the industry that it's in. And uh, also it talks about the net, uh, sorry, new and previous price target estimates. So the reason why that's covered is to basically give us an idea of, okay, have these new estimates of revenue and earnings per share uh, d um, basically pushed the analyst to change their price target uh, enough, right? So typically the major revision is an increase or decrease of 10% or greater, right? And so has these changes in their estimates of the future been enough for them to change the price target as well? And lastly, the last data point covered is the seven day return. And the reason it's there is just for us to see how the market has reacted to this change in analyst estimates, right? So if it's been a major increase uh, in, re in estimates for re revenue or earnings, then <clears throat> typically you, you would expect to see that the market reacts accordingly and they're like, okay, well, it, and it increases uh, a lot over that past week. However, the market may have already been expecting it. So this, this data, data point at the end just basically tries to give us some context of how the market has reacted to these new uh, estimates of the future. So let's have a look at some examples. This first example here is a forecasted revenue change and it's a major increase, right, of greater than 10%. And this example over here is a forecasted EPS change and it's a major decrease, right, so greater than 10% decrease. 
having a look at this first example here, we can see the consensus revenue estimate increased by 11%. And now consensus is obviously the estimate from all the analysts put together, right? Uh, it's the average. And the consensus outlook for revenues in 2022 has improved. 2022 revenue forecast increased from 570 million to 630 million. So they used to expect it to be 570 million next year or this year, but now they expect it to be 630. EPS estimate increased from $6.27 to $6.78. So quite a big increase in EPS uh, estimates as well. Net income though is forecast to shrink 31% next year versus a 7.2% decline forecast for the banks industry in the US. That's interesting, right? So it's expected to have a pretty big decline in its net income, um, but now it seems like the analysts don't expect it to be that big, right? As, as in not as big as they previously expected. They previously expected the EPS to decline all the way down to $6.27, but now they think EPS will decline only to $6.78. So it's like, it'll be bad, but not as bad as they previously thought for whatever reason, whatever news has come out, and we'll go into that in a second. Uh, the consensus price target has moved up from $74.50 to $79. So this change in um, estimates has been enough for them to move the price target estimate as well and as a result the share price fell 6.2 percent to 58 dollars 30 over the past week so the market didn't react too crazy um they like even though there's actually been an increase in analyst estimates the market you know like so, has sold off his stock about six percent over the past week so did the market didn't seem to take it you know didn't seem to um, react too positively to the news now this forecast eps decrease uh, is similar right but so the consensus eps estimates fall by 14 percent the consensus outlook for earnings per share has deteriorated. 2022 revenue estimates forecast decreased from 112 million to 105 million. EPS estimates also fell from 41 cents per share to 36 cents per share. Okay, so there's been a decline in both revenue and earnings per share estimates from analysts. Net income is forecast to shrink 8.4% next year versus 29% growth forecast for the semiconductor industry in the US. This is a stark contrast to here, right? But obviously it's still expected to do worse in the industry, but this is actually much worse, right? So it's expected to see its EPS, uh, sorry, net income decline, whereas the industry is actually predicted to grow almost 30% next year so tells us that okay this may not be the best opportunity in this industry there may there is likely better opportunities out there because this is expected to decline versus the industry that's actually expected to grow its um, earnings the consensus price target is down from $21 to $19 so as a result of this revised like lower estimates for earnings per share and revenue it seems like analysts thought it was enough or figured it was enough in their models to justify a decrease in the price target as well and um, interestingly though the share price actually rose 7.3% to $4.14 over the past week so this looks like there's a big difference in the consensus price target and the last trading um, the current price uh, and so interestingly like even though there's been a decrease in estimates the, the market seems to have bid up the price enough so um, doesn't seem too correlated with the change in estimates so let's have a look at where we can find some more details out about these updates. First section I would go to is the price history and performance chart, just to see if there's been any recent developments that have led the analysts to change their estimates of the future, right? And the, accordingly their price targets. So I'd have a look at these developments here. I click on them and read through. I can see that there was a preferred dividend announcement recently, and there'd be a few other announcements there based on the financial results because it's purple um, that may have changed analyst estimates of the future, been enough to change analyst estimates of the future. So I'd have a read through these just to see what the what the update was same thing here it looks like there was some updated guidance from this particular company um, and it was enough to basically uh, help analysts reduce their pri uh, reduce their estimates of the future right so we saw that their e uh, EPS and revenue estimates both decreased and it seems like this updated guidance from the company was probably the the news that came out that led them to do that the next section I'd have a look at is the future growth forecast section. And I just have a look to see how they've changed. Typically, if I'm watching a company like in my watch list or if it's in my stock portfolio, um, I would try and stay up to date for what I for what the analysts estimate the earnings and the revenue to be in the future, right? This is obviously the consensus. And uh, as new news comes comes out, like analysts major revisions and, and stuff like that, uh, this section here changes as well, right? Because as their models change, this is a representation of the consensus future forecast. And so I try and try and see if this graph has changed at all. And interestingly, what we saw here is that even though the revenue uh, and EPS estimates have gone higher, all that typically means is because they don't expect the earnings and revenue to decline as 
as much, right? So they used to expect 570 million in revenue, but now they expect 630 million in revenue for this year. They used to expect $6.27 in earnings per share. This is an earnings per share, but it's earnings. Uh, and now they expect it to not decline as much to be $6.78 instead. So some sort of news has come out that has led them to revise their forecast. And that's why I look at those developments. Similarly, on this uh, chart over here, I'd have a look at see how, to see if there's any been any change since when I last checked the future growth section. Um, oh, interestingly, it looks like they expect revenue to increase, right? So to $105 million from where it is right now. Uh, but it looks like the earnings per share and earnings uh, are expected to decline from where they are now. So some sort of development that updated guidance. I want to see what the development was that um, made the company release that updated guidance of like, okay, we don't think we're going to make as much money as we did uh, this year. Um, so that's that's where I go. Check out the future growth section just to see if there's been any change there and how the future forecasts look now. The next section I'd have a look at is the valuation section, just to see if the forecasts change the estimates of fair value. Because as those future growth sections change, so does this valuation section, because it is based off analyst estimates. And so interestingly, there's a $79 price target on this stock. It's currently trading at $58, um, but simply Wall Street has a fair value of 147 So quite a discrepancy between the three. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that fair value and price target are two different things. So fair value is basically an estimation of the business's value today based on its future cash flows that it can generate over its remaining life, discounted back to today's present value. Uh, whereas a price target is typically generated by analysts and it's what they think the stock will be trading at in something like six to 12 months. Uh, and they base that number of what they think the company will be earning in six to 12 months, and then they apply, apply appropriate multiples. So for example, they could think the stock will generate earnings per share of like $10 per share in 12 months time. And then they apply a PE multiple of like 10 based on the company's historical average PE ratio or just uh, industry norms at the moment or whatever whatever justification they have. And so they would give a price target of like $100 in 12 months time. So the price target is more of like a short term indication of where they think the stock will be trading in the short term, whereas a fair value estimate based off like a discounted cash flow model is like an estimation of the business's value right now based on its remaining life. And what I would have a look at is basically just try and think of my estimate of fair value, right? Because obviously this isn't a buy or sell recommendation. I would come to this section to be like, okay, here's what I think the fair value estimate is based on my research into X, Y, and Z. So I just come to this section to just um, like kind of clarify how the estimates have changed the uh, estimate of fair value. And this section would update as well as the analyst estimates change. Alternatively, if there isn't actually enough data or enough analyst coverage on a stock, there, there won't be a valuation section, but there will be these sort of price to earnings multiple comparisons with the industry that's in. And so for this company here that we saw in the example two, uh, it actually is trading at a much cheaper PE multiple than the industry, right? So 9 time, 9.7 times earnings versus 26 times earnings for the semiconductor industry. So I might go, oh, wow, based off that, it's a really cheap stock, which is really good to see. But the important thing to note is that its net income is expected to decrease compared to the industry, which is actually expected to grow its earnings quite a bit. So that gives me some context as to why the market is willing to pay a higher multiple for the industry uh, or stocks in the industry compared to this particular stock because its earnings aren't expected to grow, right? Versus these guys where they actually are expected to grow. So while it may look cheap, I need to have some context about the net income growth expectations to see if it's actually fair, right? So yeah, I would 9.7 times earnings for a company that's expected to see its earnings decline kind of makes sense, right? Um, so I would use this just to kind of um, get some uh, context about the expectations analysts have and see if it may be a good opportunity or if there's other better opportunities out there in the industry. So that was kind of a quick summary of where I go to do some due diligence. Um, just to wrap it up, I go to the price history and performance chart just to see if there's been any recent updates and developments. Um, I'd read through the update section also in the company overview uh, just to have a look if there's been any other news and articles written about the stock that have kind of, kind of provide some context to me as to why the estimates have changed. And lastly, I go to the future growth section just to see like how the forecasts have changed and what the new estimates of the future are going out a couple of years. And lastly, I'd have a look at the valuation section just to see uh, if the estimates Estimates of fair value from Simply Wall Street have changed and how that compares to the new analyst price target based on that update. So I hope this has been helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.